What's up? You're watching GearWire. I'm Owen, and uh, we're at Pitchfork 2011 uh, with Jarvis and Lucas from Woods. Thanks for joining me, guys. All right. Yeah. Nice to see you. So uh, I really enjoyed your set. Great. Thank you. And most of the time, I was trying to figure out what you were doing <laughs> on stage. So why don't you explain what you were hunched over there? Oh, I suppose I get that a lot. Um, I actually do. I get that once every show. Yeah. Um, it's uh, two uh, old Sony tape decks and a crossfader mixer and a delay pedal and uh, my vocals are feeding through the system. So I'm, I'm, it's very similar to just your kind of traditional DJ setup. My samples are on cassette tapes and I'm, I'm petting the wheel as it's, so to speak. So I'm, I'm, I'm like petting the wheel and then I, uh, there's like various like effects that you can get by smush, by like, you know, hitting the tape deck and, and smushing the buttons in a way you're not supposed to and grinding the wheel and, so it's very, it's very analog, and I'm, I'm beating the crap out of that's, those things. Yeah. I mean, and there's, not, they're not like mo uh, modified tape players at all. Or they're just modified like... insofar as that I've ripped the tops off of them, and uh, there's actually very little internal modification going on. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I have some tape decks that where you, the, the speed control is, uh, is, has been modded, where it's like you put a potentiometer in between the power and, uh, you know, uh, and, and you know, and, and the circuit, but um, actually. It's not good for Woods because I just want the tapes and the samples on the tapes to be in the key of the songs when I throw them in there. I don't want any other variables, so I am just about jamming those tapes in the band. Yeah, so right. yeah. So like in terms of like you know the songs as they're recorded, like where does that kind of because the rest of the instrumentation is fairly traditional, right? Yeah. I mean everybody kind of switches off on instruments, but so like that kind of thing, where does that fit into the the, the context of recreating area? the songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the musical gray area. Just the musical gray. Area. Yeah. And sometimes it can Vibes. it can lead, you know, or sometimes it just fills. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's it, like it, uh, it it winds up sitting in the place that maybe like it's like guitar bass drums, and then like any other instrument that would play with guitar bass okay. drums, it could be that. So it's like sometimes I'm the keyboard player, sometimes I'm the guy doing dishes with the contact mic on stage, sometimes I'm a flock of bees, sometimes I sometimes my stuff is just off, and I'm the feedback, and I'm the problem. But no. Uh, um, but uh, uh, the, the samples that I'm working with are like esoteric, the spectrum is esoteric to super normal, where I, I literally have him, a tape of him playing guitar on one song, and then for another song, I have a tape of like me doing dishes and singing that just has always sounded good. Is, is any of it from the actual recordings, like from the actual albums? No, no. none of it is. Yeah, we'll just play it live again, or, or a like, lot of them are just found sounds or something Lucas recorded a yeah. year earlier, like a friend playing accordion and happens to be in key of the song, yeah, yeah. and it you know. works. Or it'll be like, we'll be at a practice, and it'll be like, we'll be practicing a song, and it'll be like, you know what, this song could use this, and I just have a tape deck. And it's like, you know, like uh, the nature of tapes, it's like, yeah, it's pretty junky, but it really, it's just, it's got a, it's very soon, to, it's, it's like a very short distance from like idea to us playing it right. live. Yeah, so it's like, right. we're at a practice, we've got something to do, and then it's like, oh, I'll just make a guitar tape, I'll just do that right now, oh, I'll just put a drone, I put it on a tape, and then the next, the next time we play, it's just in the song, and then I, Taken on tour with us for the next 10 years. You know, it's like, but when it's some of these tapes, it's like, I've had this tape for like, you know, seven years or something. And it's like, I can't believe, I keep looking at it and be like, man. And it I, hasn't worn out yet. And it hasn't worn out. No, tapes are great. And the way it's worn some have broken. is, is uh, some have broken. And I'm like splicing them in a hotel room with a piece of duct tape I've cut out of. I shouldn't be doing that. Actually, I should back up all of that. Oh my God, what am I doing? So there's, um, you know, on the, on the recordings, there's a lot of sort of, I guess ambience and atmosphere, and I guess that's one of the ways you're sort of recreating that on stage. Um, yeah, it's like any weirdness on the on the albums that you are detecting when you are at home listening to things. Uh, technically, uh, in the grand scheme of things, my job is to it's the X factor. So, and, and you're like recreating it with with vocals too. Are are you singing through processes that are on stage, or is that something like ambience added by the sound man? Or well, we used to we used to actually have fa fairly a uh, fairly esoteric mic setup. That we jettisoned recently, and yeah, it was uh, Green Bullet. Uh, their harmonica microphones. Oh, the Shure Green Bullet. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So we used those for a while, but it's just sound men hate you when you show up with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They hate you, and you know, one out of fifteen sound guys like, cool, this is gonna sound good, and it's just so. 
But I'm, I'm you know, in reality, so it's cut like, that out. It's like it's yeah. like sound guys hate you just because you know you've got this like creative idea and you're trying to push it on them. But you can take a normal vocal mic and just be really on them about dialing in like EQ and reverb setting and kind of get it to where we want it and the reason that we like those mics in the first place. Yeah, right. And it ultimately keeps everyone happier and makes it sort of sound like we want it. Have you ever experimented with like vocal processing pedals? Yeah, I mean, that was the this, this setup with, with reverb and like a spring yeah, reverb pedal and delay yeah, yeah. and those microphones, because the microphones just cut through if the sound man's willing to work with you. Bullets do, yeah. They will just cut through the mix and instead of just being this murky, you know, it's all Shitty high end. club sound, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and then I, I like, m I sing through my headphones that go through effects that come out of my mix, which is, which is pretty esoteric, and so, like, that's, like, the token weirdness. I, I was concerned that you were actually on oxygen when I first yeah. saw it. Yeah, actually, I, I, get, I get oxygen. That's very funny. I get oxygen. A little I get, cup of milk. Yeah. <laughs> like Mick Fleetwood. I need some milk. <laughs> I need some milk. Bring me the milk. That'll be the thing. Couldn't he just be like, bring me the milk? No. That's a beer signal. He had to pick the, like, There's right, the, that's, beer, that's universally the beer signal. He had, to pick, like, he had to pick the yuckiest, like, <laughs> do it. Put it right on my We're tongue. talking about a Fleetwood Mac live video. <laughs> like, that I'm we've not seen. just picking that up. I've, I've, I've actually seen that, ah, so yes, I know I knew what you're talking about. Yeah. Just so everybody else knows. <laughs> yeah, it's not, I'm not just. I'm These not aren't just our codes. Tones. Okay, yeah, right. Here. Everyone, actually, that, that's like a funny thing where you're like. the thing, you do the thing. Yeah, where you're like. Do the tongue thing. While he's playing drums, and you see an arm come into the shot, dump beer into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's normal, and the songs continue, and everyone's and like, amazing. <laughs> milk guy. That's when you know you've made it. <laughs> do the milk guy. You know you've, you know you've made it when I you're. I think you would do that, and you'd be like, I'm a loser. <laughs> Him, maybe. No. Yeah, like, now, no. Mick, I want to talk a little bit about the um, the sort of new space up in Warwick, uh, the sort of like I guess Woodist headquarters. Woodist, Woodist, Woodist. Woodist. not Woodist, but Woodist. Um, yeah, what what was that space like? Was it a found space or how was that converted? Uh, it's a house. Jeremy grew up upstate in the same town that the house is he's in. A, he's a singer for Woods. Singer for Woods, yeah. and um, he's been wanting. To move, he was lived in New York for only like five years or something, and just wanted to move back up. Found a great house. Living room sounds great for drums. He's got a couple, you know, pieces of recording equipment. And then I'll go up and bring a tape machine or a computer and a bunch of equipment, preamps and stuff. And we'll just kind of get, get busy for, you know, five days straight. Uh, what's that recording setup? What are you guys recording into? Um, a lot of the last record, last two records is a Tascam 388. Okay, yeah. Which, yeah, it's like a big cassette eight track, you know, but a reel-to-reel -reel quarter inch yeah, yeah. tape. And do that and then, you know, use Logic if maybe. Or sometimes we'll bypass it for, I have a half inch tape, or sometimes we use computer. Kind of whatever's around. We work quick, so if I'm up there and I didn't bring a lot of gear and we just, you know, we got an idea. So just turn the tape deck on. Go so, time. So I would imagine that having like an eight track tape though would be kind of like limiting. Like I feel like there's more planning required if you have sort of limits like that. But I don't know. I mean, you could just go on and on with the options you have with digital recording. Yeah. And we've definitely utilized that, but at the same time, all the records I like, like older records I like, I know that, you know, those were a track too. So if I can't at least try to make that work, there's something wrong, you know. I think there's enough options in this world that, you know, like really takes care of you. Like you, you that's what's funny about now. You can get whatever you want. So your choices about how you go about things is folded back into your own personal aesthetic, yeah, right. you know? So, so it's like the value of those like old things is like workflow related. Yeah, need, like, like, like a lot of inspiration and a lot of good things come out of having the limitations, yeah, right, right. you know, so. Cool. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah thanks for the time. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, dude.